Hello, my name is Will Salisbury. Let's go over the basics we just covered in the PowerPoint. First, let's start off by getting to iConfigure itself. This can normally be done by the Windows Start button. Go down to the version of Calix you're currently running. In this case, we're covering 2016 Calix. You see it here. There is underneath the 2016 folder, iConfigure. Go ahead and click that. If you plan on using iConfigure frequently, if you're a lead designer or something of the sort, when you load the program down here on the taskbar, you can right click it and click pin to taskbar, which will leave that icon there for, for expedient use. Okay. Now that we've clicked it, this is our iConfigure software right here. Uh, let's see here. <laughs> As you can see, we have lots of clients already established for the Keystone uh, clients. Um, we're going to go over how to start a new project from the very beginning. Um, as we discussed previously in the PowerPoint, there are three different tiers to setting up an Isogen iConfigure style. That is isometric directory, projects, and a new style. So these act as tiers. In the Keystone setup, we would call these things slightly different. Uh, instead of saying project uh, directory or isometric directory, what you would say is client directory. So this is going to be the directory that is named after the client. The new project would be job numbers. So your job number would be your project. And then your styles would be different variations of runs you need to do under that particular job number. For instance, say you have a job number that the project is running weight analysis. So, on top of the regular isometric runs that you would normally produce, you also need to make a variation that has additional columns in the build material to express weight. What this will mean is you will have to create an additional backing sheet. That backing sheet would have a different build material setup on the border, allowing for additional columns to be generated. Okay, we'll get into that in uh, the second class, the more advanced setup. Today we're just going to cover the basic generations. So we'll start with a new project isometric directory. In this case, you will go and you will scan to the W drive. You will go to Isogen and you will create a new folder here named for your client. Let's, for our example, name a client. Mm, something good. Hmm. What would be a good client name? Let's say Denberry Resources. Denberry could be shortened to a three letter identifier. So, we're going to create that new folder that we just made by using the Make New Folder button. We're going to rename it and we're going to call it DEN. DEN would be short for Denberry. Now, to make these consistent so that people don't double up or misconstrue which three letter identifier goes to which client, we're going to open up a Windows Explorer. Right. As you can see here, we're going to go to our W drive from here. Also going to the Isogen folder. Okay. Now under here, we just created the DEN folder, which is now sit visible through the uh, Windows Explorer. But to keep things consistent, we're going to register this three letter identifier in this Excel sheet that's in this folder called Client Abbreviations. So I'm opening that now. Okay. As you see, this format's relatively simple. What we would do is we'll name out the full wording for the client's name in the Denberry Resources. Okay. And then we're going to list our three letter identifier, D E N. This makes it so that if someone's not sure what that three letters that three letters is meaning in the folder, they can open up the Excel sheet to find the full name of the client, as some three letter identifiers can be very similar to others. Okay? So once we've registered and saved the change, we now have this three letter identifier um, updated in the abbreviation sheet. And after that, you can pretty much get out of here, but we're going to leave that open because there are some additional things that need to be used later in the Windows Explorer. Okay, so now that we have our client picked out, 
we have the folder made. We are now going to click OK to identify that is where our client material is going to be generated. Now after we click OK, iConfigure creates a isometric directory with that within that folder. Okay. Our next step is to copy, or actually to make, a isometric style. So let's say this is 778801. Okay. Now for the needs here, you're not going to want to use a lot of the defaults because we already have established our own set of standards at Keystone. So what we should only leave check is the check style. What this does is allows us to um, run an isogen style to make sure that what is running is is working, that the isogen style itself is working. So if we have a problem with the one that we've made after the fact, uh, we can test that the style itself is the issue. Because if this one doesn't run, then you have other issues that go beyond um, the style itself. There's something in the model perhaps, or something in uh, on the way that the network is currently configured that has to be addressed. So it's a little a little tester. So we click OK. As you can see now, we have our 778801, the job number, and we now have that check style built underneath it. Right? Um, the next step is we would create another style, this third button, that is specific to our client's needs for this project. Um, in this case, we don't do that very often. Uh, that because it's a lot of work to get everything set up and configured properly. It's, it's not a lot, but it's significant. So, instead, we'll go to a previous client that we know we have set up properly. In this case, I've recently created Lion Oil. And Lion Oil has a job number and a style. Now, you have the option to copy it at either of those levels. I could copy this entire job number and it would bring over the check and the line final. In this case, we just want to get this line final because we know this is the properly configured isogen style that we've made. So click it, right click, copy. Okay. Now we come back, since we, we copied something that's underneath a job number or underneath a project, we're going to click on the project in this client's directory, right click, paste. And as you can see, we're getting prompted right here to name this style. It's going to default to the same name as the one previously used. In this case, instead of Lion File, we're going to use Denberry File. D E N. Okay. So what it does is copy all the files that were used in that previous style into this directory, and now we have a check and a Denberry File. So when we go into Denberry File, everything should be pretty much set up and good to go. Give it a moment. We're going to go ahead to the edit function. Okay, this is your actual dialog for editing your isogen style. Everything should be good to go, but there are some things that need to be addressed. Um, let's go ahead and go into our drawing setup tool. The drawing setup tool allows you to look at the isogen style that you're currently running and its border. So right now we're using an El Dorado refinery border which would not be appropriate for our current job because they are different clients. So, the first thing we come to is the template. Here, we would click the dot to dot, and that would allow us to browse to a different DWG. Now, it's going to start probably in general use or somewhere like that. You just go up a folder to Isogen, go to your current client, which in this case was a Denberry, go into your job number, and go into your style. Now here, you need to copy the client's isogen border. So let's say we have another border out there. Let's go ahead and grab one from another client. Okay, we'll say this one. Okay, come back to isogen, Denberry, the job number, and the file. And we'll paste in the appropriate Border. Okay. Now as I switch that, you see that it switches the, the representation on the screen. Now we should already have these widths and heights properly set to whatever the dimensions on the border are. It is set in inches, so if you're not sure what they should be, 
you need to go in and open this DWG in AutoCAD and measure out the width and the height and transcribe those here. Okay. Everything else should be good from here. Uh, you only want user defined material list up here and you only want one section identified on the right. Okay. Now up here we have three to four tabs. We have basic setup, drawing area, material list, and attributes. We're gonna go ahead and jump to the next section which is drawing areas. Okay. In here you can see we have our areas should be showing up with highlights, but right now it's not. Um, typically what you would see here is the representation of two different hatched areas that are shaped. Um, this area should be showing like a red or a green, and this one should be showing red or green to define where the drawing is generated and where the bill of material is laid out. We're going to switch over to materialist. Again, there should be a representation here. It might be because we switched over borders and that that uh, dimension needs to be redefined. Over here in your material list, you're going to define the different columns that you see here and how far they are spaced apart before it generates the next segment of text. Again, if you have additional columns, you will have to add more columns to this. And that can be done with this little green button right here called Add Attribute. As you can see, when I click it, it adds another column. You can name this column like if we wanted to say it was going to be weight or some other variable. You have to pull from the list, here it is, weight. Something that can be pulled from each component. So there's only a set number of variables that are there. And then the attributes themselves. These attributes are things that are generated from uh, the metadata in the model. So pipeline references, stuff like that. You can see here we have revision, uh, kind of see all the metadata that's in here as well, the, the, the block attributes for the, for the border. What you'll be doing here is setting where we're generating the line number which should be right here which is also the drawing number. how many sheets of sheets there are so that's again uh, drawing and drawing total so these two num these two attributes will generate here and here and that will allow you to uh, show how many sheets you have in that particular run <clears throat> north arrow um, I have it set to zero 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 in this case um, this has been an issue that's been brought up recently where people did not like that sometimes isogen will move your north arrow to other locations on your drawing. This can be solved. Um, if you don't care and your client doesn't care where the north arrow generates, then setting this to a defined point on the drawing is preferable. That would allow it to generate um, where it needs to generate so that you can get the most out of your drawing area. But if you zero it out, what you do is you copy that isogen north arrow into a particular point in the border. So the border will hold that that north arrow as part of itself instead of being generated by the by the software. Okay, and that's pretty much the gist of this. I'm kind of annoyed that it's not showing the uh, the hatch areas. Let's see if we can't save and come back into this. Okay, we just saved our modifications. Let's see if we come back in if it will show us those hatches.